Euh, bonjour à tous. On m'a conseillé de, de parler dans la langue de Shakespeare au lieu de la langue de Molière et pour ne pas bastardiser la langue de Molière. Donc, euh, j'espère que ça ira pour vous. Um, D'abord, uh, so first of all, um, I'll be talking about the eggshell. And we've heard so many interesting things about the rest of the egg, the yolk, the, the white, the, uh, the development of the embryo. But today, I'll be telling you about the eggshell and what is in it. And I'll be extrapolating into two different domains that I think, I hope will, will be interesting. Some biomedical uh, possibilities to exploit some of the properties of the eggshell and the eggshell membranes. Uh, pardon. Uh, of course, why are we all here today? Because we are fascinated, fascinated by eggs and by uh, their, their use, their, uh, their form. Uh, they started with dinosaurs, is that really true? I think Joel knows more than most of us about that. But in fact, the amniotic egg uh, is the product of more than 300 million years of evolution. It was absolutely critical for animals to colonize dry land, to develop um, to re reproduction in a, the desiccating terrestrial environment required uh, an enclosure. And the eggshell is that enclosure. And so the common ancestors of crocodiles, dinosaurs, and of course birds um, all laid eggs with a calcareous shell surrounding them. And so the egg, as we've heard, uh, I don't have to uh, extract, I don't have to say too much about it, it contains everything that's necessary for life. It has the, the defensive compartments and it has the uh, defensive barriers for mechanical protection to exclude bacteria. And with the proper attention to incubation, an incubated egg will generate <coughs> life. Um, and so all of the, the nutrients, we've heard about the nutrients in the egg white and in the egg yolk, but now I'm going to focus on the, um, the remainder of the egg. So uh, Clara told us so, so much uh, about the, the use of table, of uh, the, other table, the other use for, for eggs. We know that 70% uh, or so worldwide are consumed as shell eggs, but at uh, the interior are separated, breaking plants. About 30% of these um, of the egg contents are separated for transformation. Um, of course, what we haven't heard yet is what about the remainder? What about the egg shell? Uh, globally, millions of tons of egg shell waste are produced. In France alone, more than 40,000 tons. Um, so what is it? Is it just something, a uh, waste product that can be discarded? Or is it in fact a precious resource because it's a biological material that was part of the original protection, the original enclosure of the embryo as it developed. The, the properties of the egg shell were absolutely critical for the, the proper development of the embryo. And so uh, I think Joel told us uh, some of these details already, but the eggshell itself represents about 10% of the egg white, and it's mainly uh, calcium carbonate mineral, it has many mineralization specific proteins in its contents. For example, osteopontin, uh, which, which is uh, important for mineralization of our bones, is also found throughout the eggshell mineral itself. And the eggshell membrane that lines the, the, uh, the interior of the eggshell uh, these membranous fibers um, contain collagens, hyaluronic acid, and other uh, sugar-based molecules. Um, and uh, the, the properties of the, uh, the, the fibers are based on collagen and other uh, membranous fibrous um, proteins. Now, there's been some exploitation of the, uh, the shell, uh, for example, to for, to the, the shell is 40% or so calcium and can be uh, used to fortify foods. 
adding to orange juice um, or yogurt, for example. There's some examples. Um, and one can also find commercialization of the eggshell membranes. Not just that they're very stable and insoluble, but the collagens and, and glucosamine glycans um, are uh, reminiscent of the constituents of the cartilage in our joints. And in fact, there are clinical studies that have demonstrated a positive benefit to consumption of uh, eggshell membrane materials uh, to relieve joint pain. Uh, and so one can find these products and others uh, easily on Amazon.fr or other, uh, other uh, magasins de grande surface. Uh, but what I'm going to tell you about now is some, uh, some developments that uh, have started and uh, are, in, are continuing in my laboratory where we have looked at the use of the eggshell and the eggshell membranes in two separate um, avenues of development for biomedical projects, biomedical applications for human health. And first of all, uh, the application of a shell for uh, bone regeneration. Why bone regeneration? Well, bone is actually one of the second most frequently uh, transplanted tissues after blood. So it's, there's a large market for, for bone for uh, transplantation for human uh, health. Um, and due to the growing number of bone defects and fractures in our worldwide aging population, there's a, uh, an increasing need for bone products. The gold standard procedure is uh, an autograft procedure, the transplantation of bone from one region in a patient's body to another, to where the bony defect is. Um, it has some disadvantages. And there's a growing need for new substitutes that could be implanted in a bone defect or as a site of disease to promote new bone growth or osteogenesis. And this growing need, one can look at the statistics and see that it's anticipated to, to grow substantially in the coming decades as the world population ages. Can we think of uh, exploiting the chicken eggshell as a bone regenerative material? It has calcium, as our bones do, of course, not the calcium phosphate of our bones has some of the identical um, matrix proteins related to mineralization, like uh, the collagens and osteopontin. Um, some studies in the past have found poor results for uh, bone regeneration with um, eggshell implantation, because eggshell is not very porous. It's basically impermeant with a few pores to allow uh, uh, respiratory gases to, uh, to equalize across the eggshell. But in fact, it's not as porous as is necessary for cells and blood vessels to, to, to pass through, as is, is the case in bone. However, um, the concept of embedding fragments, particles of eggshell, into a hydrogel, into a larger porous matrix where nutrients can diffuse and blood vessels can penetrate to nourish cells. And so um, we've developed a project to combine eggshell and hydrogel matrices for bone regeneration applications. And so uh, my students uh, worked out uh, appropriate methods to, uh, to prepare uh, eggshell particles, uh, the, not uh, with a grinding and a sieving process, prepare particles, and we prepared two types of particles because we wanted to evaluate the effect of modifying the texture the surface uh, features of these particles. Uh, we did this with an acid treatment because it's, it's well known that uh, cells interact with surfaces differently depending upon the, the nature of the surface. And so a rough texture will be more appealing to, uh, to the attachment of, of cells, particularly those that are important for, uh, for bone development. Uh, we can, and what we saw was that the, uh, after the acid treatment, there was a nanotexture that was induced, so a roughness, a, an etching of the surface, uh, which uh, was different than in the, the non-acid treated particles. Uh, and we were able to, to verify this with some spectroscopic studies where we, we observed uh, bonds related to proteins that became exposed on the surface of the nanotextured particles. We also observed 
some bonds related to phosphate, uh, suggesting that phosphate was now associated with the surface. And that's another factor, phosphate, in, in terms of promoting bone growth. And so that was, uh, we, we thought that would be suitable. Now what do these, these uh, hydrogel scaffolds look like? These are about, uh, the scale bar here is about, uh, five, about one millimeter, and so these are about five millimeter cylinders, um, and they contain embedded uh, eggshell particles. In this little movie here, you can see micro CT video of the particles as the images have been assembled into a, into a little movie. And so you can see the, the, uh, very visually the particles that are embedded into these, um, these uh, hydrogel scaffolds. Um, and we characterize these um, by scanning electron microscopy. The, the hydrogels without particles have a, a very regular appearance which appears to be more porous when embedded in, when the eggshell particles are embedded in them. And in the far panel, we can see the porous structure of normal bone. So we're, we're in a region uh, in terms of size and porosity, which is where we want to be. And we, we, we found that this was the case. But more importantly, we also observed that the uh, eggshell particles slowed down the degradation and made the, uh, made these uh, scaffolds more stable in aqueous solution. Um, in order to evaluate these scaffolds with respect to bone formation um, in the presence of cells, of course, uh, we used uh, mesenchymal stem cells uh, to, uh, to, to with, with, interacting with these scaffolds. And although the, these stem cells can, can develop into cartilage or muscle, or other types of tissues, when they develop into bone, when they follow the bone lineage for osteogenesis, uh, we expect to see an increase in alkaline phosphatase activity and collagen secretion, osteopontin secretion, the deposition of, of calcium phosphate, the bone material, as these cells develop into osteoblasts. Uh, and we did see, first of all, these cells in our scaffolds they were compatible. There was a maintenance of cell viability that we didn't see in the blank scaffolds that lacked the eggshell particles. We saw an increase in alkaline phosphatase activity, and we also saw an increase in a bone transcription factor, run X2, and the secretion of osteopontin. So these are all positive features, suggesting that the cells, when they're in, in, the, in the eggshell particle-based scaffolds, be, became um, more uh, osteoblast, osteoblast-like. We were able to visualize these with confocal microscopy. Now in these images, you can see the autofluorescence of the scaffold in the background, and the green particles are actually living cells that have incorporated a green dye. You can see that here in these blank scaffolds that have no eggshell particles, that the cells are round, and uh, they're very few in number because the cells don't really like to be in these scaffolds. On the other hand, when we seeded the scaffolds, the eggshell particle-based scaffolds, we saw lots of living cells, the green cells, and uh, the holes that you see here, the dark holes actually are where the mineral is, and so the, the cells surround the, the mineral particles. After 21 days, we don't see much difference in the blank scaffolds, they still don't have many cells, and those cells appear to be very round. However, after 21 days, uh, in the, uh, with the particle-based scaffolds, we see lots of living cells, and they surround and they stretch out over the, over the surface of the, the eggshell particles. And so we think this is very positive uh, development, and that these, cell, these scaffolds have a lot of potential in terms of encouraging stem cells to develop and become uh, bone-like uh, cells. In other words, the bone phenotype become osteoblast. So we observed that both types of eggshell-based particles improve the scaffolds and that osteogenic differentiation occurred in both of them. For, in terms of future directions, uh, now we're ready to, to think about pursuing animal models for both safety evaluation and potentially a model where we would look at the regeneration of bone in the presence of these scaffolds 
because they're, they're quite uh, easy to cut and to shape, and so they can be adapted to the size and to the exact uh, 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 dimensions of a, uh, of a bone defect. So that's one study. The second one I'm, I'm going to tell you about is uh, where we've been able to develop something very interesting using the eggshell membranes. Of course, you remember the eggshell membranes are found in the interior of the eggshell itself. Uh, and there's a, 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 tradition, uh, a traditional um, concept in, uh, in, in Chinese medicine, which is based <coughs> upon exploiting plants and animal products uh, for, uh, for healing purposes. And one concept which, which reoccurs in, the, in, the, in this traditional Asian medicine is that the uh, eggshell membranes can be thought of as a bandage. So they contain healing molecules and when applied to a surface cut to a wound will uh, support healing. And so can we take this kind of inspiration and uh, what we know about the, uh, the chemistry, the biochemistry of the eggshell membranes and exploit this to develop a, a product for human health. And so uh, I, I know Joel uh, really opened our eyes with respect to the, the large number of molecules that are found in egg white, egg shell, and the same is true for the eggshell membranes. We want to identify the protein constituents and their function and then validate the, their healing properties of this material in an animal model. And so, uh, indeed, our, uh, we, we found more than 200 individual, um, individual types of proteins that were identified. Uh, when we tried to organize their function, we saw that there was functionality related to inhibition of proteases, uh, defense to, and, and antimicrobial activities, um, extracellular matrix constituents, and those proteins that are related to the inflammatory response. So all of these properties would be very useful in a, in a, in a, a healing uh, environment. Uh, we quantified some of these activities. Uh, the upper panels uh, show inhibition of matrix metalloproteinase activity. These are proteases that are active during uh, wound healing. Um, and uh, we also uh, uh, quantified some anti-inflammatory uh, activities in a cell culture system. At the same time, we saw that the cells themselves were very compatible with the eggshell membrane preparation that we developed. And so this is a, when I say we developed, this is a powder-like material. At the SCM level, at high magnification, it looks like this. And so this is developed from eggshell membranes that are stripped away from the, from the eggshell. Um, we evaluated how, uh, how useful this, this could be in a wound healing model. And so here it's, it's, a, it's a classic kind of mouse model where a defect is created in the skin and the product is applied or not applied. And then healing, the rate of healing is evaluated by image analysis. And when we, when we do that, we see that the, the kinetics of, of wound closure are accelerated in the presence of the, uh, the eggshell membrane material. So healing occurred at a faster rate. At the same time, uh, we wanted to look at this more closely, so we did histology of the tissues that were involved, and we could see thicker granulation tissue compared to the control, um, greater clot formation uh, overlying the wound. And so these uh, histology features were showing us what was happening at the same time as the wound was closing more quickly in the, in the animals that were treated with the eggshell membrane material. We also saw we could quantify this increase in granulation tissue in the presence of the, uh, of the eggshell membrane material um, at different times during, during uh, healing. Now what's going on? Why? What's our rationale for the uh, ability of the proteins in the eggshell membranes to improve healing. Well, healing, uh, wound healing in involves a balance between protease activity, extracellular matrix degradation. Um, if there are bacterial proteases present, uh, there may be an inflammatory response. All of these have to be kept in 
close balance in order for wound healing to be effective. In fact, there are some situations where wound healing is delayed because an imbalance is created. The cells produce uh, high levels of proteases. Too much extracellular matrix becomes degraded. Infection can set in and bacterial proteases will exacerbate the problem. And so there's a vicious cycle of delayed wound healing uh, which can occur. And in order to exit this, this vicious cycle, it's important to reduce the microbial burden to inhibit the, uh, bac uh, the bacterial contamination and to inhibit proteases and to uh, ex exit from this, this uh, cycle of delayed wound healing. Now when can, when does, this is, this is often found, it's a serious clinical issue in chronic wounds which do not heal, uh, diabetes, diabetes and, and old age are risk factors for ulcers, diabetic ulcers, pressure ulcers, ulcers, and uh, these wounds have a, a, uh, are subject to delayed healing or they do not heal. And so it's a serious issue, clinical issue for patients that suffer from this. We evaluated the ability of our material the eggshell membrane material to, uh, to, to act in a positive sense upon this type, in this type of a healing model. And uh, we, instead of using normal mice that had been used in the previous study, a diabetic mouse model was used. And so the, uh, in, this, in this model, the wind, wind, wound closure does not occur at a, at a normal rate, and in fact, um, even up to three weeks in this particular uh, setup, the wound uh, closure is not observed. In contrast, when in these diabetic mites, when the eggshell membrane material is applied to the, uh, to the wounds, full wound closure does occur, full healing does occur, and it occurs at an accelerated rate as well compared to the to the, uh, the situation when um, in the absence of the eggshell membrane material. So this is all, all very positive and indicates that the, um, the eggshell membrane material is, is having a positive effect on wound healing. Uh, there are other models that are available and we've also evaluated this eggshell membrane based product in a pig skin model and the porcine model which is more closely related to human skin. Um, and again, an accelerated rate of wound closure was seen. And in this study, um, a, a different formulation of the eggshell membrane material was used in which a sheet-like ma like matrix or ma um, uh, was, was developed which contained uh, uh, the eggshell membrane particles uh, throughout it. And this could be applied very easily to the surface, to a large surface um, defect. And uh, so to conclude, uh, this, this study, uh, we've identified many eggshell membrane pot proteins which uh, have, uh, are, represent key structural elements because it's a highly st uh, structured um, tissue. And, but there also are functions of, anti of uh, protease inhibition, anti-inflammatory and anti uh, antimicrobial <coughs> activities. And, uh, we, in our wound healing models, we observed uh, accelerated wound healing, improved wound healing in a mouse model of normal wound healing, um, in a diabetic model of delayed wound healing, and also in, a, in a, another model, the pig uh, model, which is more, more closely corresponds to human skin, so human skin healing. So product has been developed, and it's, uh, so this is, carried through right from the basic science, characterizing eggshell membrane proteins to a product which is going to, is currently undergoing clinical trials in seven hospitals in the UK, and, a, and another uh, trial is going to start soon in Nice at the uh, University Hospital. So it'll be very interesting to see how, how this develops, but it, it's all very promising so far. And so uh, I hope I've convinced you that my vision is, uh, is reasonably accurate, that uh, the eggshell as an enclosure for, for life also has some elements that can benefit human health. 
And I'd like to thank you very much for your attention.